comes the magic school bus. That means that Miss Frizzle is about to take us on another weird trip. You have no idea what she makes us go through, but you're about to find out. Thanks to Joanna Cole, who wrote about us in her book, and Bruce Deegan, who drew the pictures. Today, we're going inside the human body. If you want to come along, climb on board. Bring your books. Not all of the words are on this tape, but you can follow along. Just turn the page when you hear this sound. It all began when Miss Frizzle showed our class a film strip about the human body. We knew trouble was about to start because we knew Miss Frizzle was the strangest teacher in the school. We're going to learn about ourselves. This should interest you, Arnold. I can't take the pressure. A film strip is only the beginning, you know. Yeah, I bet she has books about this, too. Your wonderful body. When's recess? <laughs> the very next day, the frizz made us do an experiment on our own bodies. Before we began, Rachel read her report to us. <clears throat> Your body is made of cells, by Rachel. Your body seems to be all one piece, but actually it is made of trillions of tiny pieces called cells. Thank you, Rachel. My body is made of trillions of cells. So is mine. Today I want you to see your own cells. Did you know that most cells are so small that we can't see them without a microscope? Here's what the frizz told us to do. One, gently scrape the inside of your cheek with a toothpick. Two, stir the end of the toothpick in a drop of water on a slide. Three, add a drop of iodine solution to color the cells. Four, look at slide under microscope and see your cells. Ooh, weird. Gregory, I think this would be a good time to read your report. Different kinds of cells have different jobs by Gregory. Lung cells help you breathe. Muscle cells help you move. Brain cells help you think. Your cells need energy to help you grow, move, talk, think, and play. Just being in Miss Frizzle's class takes all my energy. Then she announced that we were going on a class trip to the Science Museum. We were going to see an exhibit about how our bodies get energy from the food we eat. The trip started out like any other trip. We rode to the museum in the old school bus. Along the way, we stopped at a park for lunch. Leftover fish sticks. Ick! Hey, John, I'll trade you these terrific fish sticks for that horrible peanut butter and banana sandwich. Forget it. Take a look at her shoes. Please, I'm eating. When it was time to go, everyone got back on the bus. Everyone but Arnold. He was still at the picnic table, daydreaming and eating a bag of cheesy wheezies. When you eat, your body digests the food so your cells can use it to make energy. Who knows what digest means, Dorothy Ann? <clears throat> Digestion comes from a word that means to divide. When food is digested, it is divided into smaller and smaller parts. Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle? Yes, Carmen? My report is about food, so, so could I? Go ahead and read it, Carmen. Your body needs good food by Carmen. For high energy and good growing power, eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, milk and milk products, whole grain cereal and pasta, lean meats, fish, poultry and eggs. Hurry up, Arnold! Arnold's really up to lunch! 
Miss Frizzle reached for the ignition key, but instead she pushed a strange little button nearby. At once we started shrinking and spinning through the air. From inside we couldn't see what was happening. All we knew was that we landed... suddenly. Mm. Hey, where's the bus? And then we were going down a dark tunnel. We had no idea where we were. But as usual, Miss Frizzle knew. She said we were inside a human body, going down the esophagus, the tube that leads from the throat to the stomach. Wanda, read your report. Now? Now. Food goes to your stomach through the esophagus. By Wanda. The food does not just fall down. It is pushed along by muscle actions the way toothpaste is squeezed out of a tube. That is why you can swallow even when you are upside down. Muscle squeeze to push food to your stomach. Most of us were too upset about leaving Arnold behind to pay much attention. Where's Arnold? He got left. That's what happens when you eat junk food. I thought we were going to the museum. There's been a slight change of plans. We are being digested instead. <laughs> We are now passing into the stomach, said Miss Frizzle. It wasn't exactly quiet in there. Phil told us why. Why does your stomach growl? By Phil. Sometimes your stomach churns when there is not much food in it. Then the gases in your stomach make a gurgling sound. Your stomach is like a built-in food processor. The walls of the stomach moved in and out, churning and mashing the food into a thick liquid. The bus was turning round and round, and digestive juices splashed the windows. Now we knew how it felt to be a hamburger. Roll up your windows, children. Miss Frizzle drove to the bottom of the stomach. Yeah. We'll drive through this opening to the small intestine, he said. In the small intestine, food is broken down into molecules, tiny enough for the body cells to use. I want to go home. But this is educational. Does education have to be this messy? Meanwhile, back at the picnic table... I don't feel so good. Maybe it was something I ate. Poor kid! <laughs> The small intestine was a coiled-up hollow tube. John read his report. Why are the intestines coiled up? In an adult, the intestines are 7.5 meters or 25 feet long. If they were stretched out straight, a person would have to be as tall as a house. The inner walls of the tube were covered with tiny fingers called villi. In the villi are tiny blood vessels. Food molecules are taken into these blood vessels, said Miss Frizzle. Dorothy Ann told us more. Blood vessels are tubes that carry blood. They are like pipelines running through your body. Once the food is in the blood, it can travel all over the body. We felt ourselves getting even smaller, and Miss Frizzle started driving into one of the villi. She was going straight into a blood vessel. Class, this bus is following the path of the food molecules into the blood. You mean this body thinks we're food? That's better than being waste. I wish Arnold were here to see this. Yeah, it's so gross. <laughs> now we were in the blood, but close up it did not look red. Ms. Frizzle explained it to us. Blood is not just a red liquid. Blood is made of cells floating in a clear fluid. Molly read her report. What is blood made of by Molly? A little more than half the blood is a yellowish fluid called plasma. The rest of the blood is made of floating cells. Those cells look like red rubber saucers. Someone called out. Miss Frizzle explained. Those are red blood cells. Who knows why blood normally looks red, Shirley? Without a microscope,
Blood looks red because there are so many red blood cells in it. In every drop of blood, there are 250 million red blood cells. Right. And red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to all the cells of the body. Here and there, a white blood cell was busy destroying disease germs. White blood cells are like soldiers protecting your body from enemies. Did you see that? The white blood cell ate the germ. That's disgusting. Then Ralph read his report on blood. What is blood for? Your blood is like a delivery service. It carries food and oxygen to your body cells and waste products away from the cells. Looking back, we saw a white blood cell chasing the bus. That white blood cell must think the school bus is a germ. Well, the bus is pretty dirty. We'll be safer with the red blood cells, kids. Then Miss Frizzle reached for the handle that controlled the bus's doors. Do it! We cried. But when did Miss Frizzle ever listen? The doors of the bus flew open. We were swept out of the bus and into the bloodstream. Everybody, hitch a ride. Each kid grabbed a red blood cell as it went by. Our last glimpse of the bus was when it went into another blood vessel with the white blood cell right behind it. We'll never get out of here now. Why can't we just have spelling tests like other kids? These red blood cells have turned dull red. They need more oxygen. Meanwhile, Arnold was getting anxious. Oh my gosh, I'm lost. Don't panic. Please turn the tape over to the other side. The next thing we knew, we had flowed into the heart. Have a heart, Miss Frizzle. Get us out of here. Inside the heart are four hollow spaces called chambers. Each chamber is a little pump. Flory, it's time for your report. Your Heart is a Pump by Flory. When the walls of the heart chambers squeeze together, they pump out blood, just the way you can squeeze water out of a plastic squeeze bottle. Oops! Hey! The two chambers on the right side of the heart took and used blood from the body and pumped it into the lungs. In the lungs, the red cells pick up fresh oxygen. We get new oxygen from the air each time we breathe in. <gasps> We get rid of a waste gas, carbon dioxide, each time we breathe out. Arnold was feeling stranger and stranger. My heart is pounding. Take a deep breath. You'll be okay. <coughs> Look, when the red blood cells pick up oxygen, they turn bright red. From the lungs, our red blood cells carried us back to the heart. This time we were on the left side of the heart, the side that pumps fresh blood back to the body again. Kids, it looks as if these red blood cells are on their way to the brain. Class, those brain cells need more oxygen. We'll never get home unless we find the bus. Maybe we'll find it in the brain. Meanwhile, Arnold was thinking... Which way back to school? Use your brain! Your brain is always working, by Alex. Even when you're sleeping, your brain controls your heartbeat, breathing, and other body functions. Your brain never lies down on the job. When we reached the brain, we let go of our red blood cells and squeezed out of the blood vessel. It was hard to believe that this wrinkled gray blob was the control center of the body. Children, we are walking on the cerebral cortex, the pinkish-gray outer layer of the brain. Without it, we couldn't see, hear, smell, touch, taste, talk, move, or think. Do you think we'll be smarter after this? 
I hope so. Ms. Frizzle said the brain is made of billions of busy nerve cells. They are constantly sending and receiving messages from the eyes, ears, muscles, and other parts of the body. We walked on three parts of the brain, the cerebral cortex, brainstem, and cerebellum. Where's the bus? Arnold was wondering where the school was. Let's see. Miss Frizzle was driving that way to the museum, so our school must be this way. Good thinking! <coughs> We left the head by climbing down the bones of the spine. Don't look down! Inside the bones was the spinal cord, a thick bundle of nerve cells stretching from the brain. Smaller bundles of nerve cells branched out from each side of the spinal cord. These carried nerve messages to all the parts of the body. The spinal cord connects the brain with the nerves that go to the body. I think I'm losing my nerves. Amanda Jane told us that the nerves send messages to our muscles. If you want to move a muscle by Amanda Jane, the motor area in the cortex of your brain sends out a message to move. The message travels down the spinal cord and through the nerves that control the muscles. Then Tim gave his report. Muscles move your bones. Some muscles are attached to bones. When the muscles contract, get shorter, they pull on the bones. That makes the bones move, and then you move. We followed some nerves that went to the leg muscles. The leg muscles were working hard. They needed a lot of energy. They used up a lot of food and oxygen from the blood. The heart was beating faster to carry fresh blood to the muscle cells. Children, we are sliding on a muscle. From here, we'll return to the bloodstream. I have the strangest feeling he's close by. I'll get there sooner if I run. The more active you are, the faster your heart beats. We entered a nearby blood vessel. The blood was moving so fast we were afraid we would lose each other. But at that moment, the school bus floated by. What a relief! We jumped on. Class, we're on the way out of the body. Relax. We're going back now. I can't relax as long as I see blood cells outside the window. We went up through the heart and lungs again just the way we went before. When we emerged from the bloodstream, we were in a huge open space. Where are we? Asked the kid. Miss Frizzle explained. Children, this is the nasal cavity. What? Ew. The inside of the nose, said the Frizz. We're in a nose? I'm so grossed out. This time she's gone too far. Suddenly we heard a deafening noise. It sounded like... Uh, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Uh, uh, Use your uh, hanky. Uh, 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 uh. Then we heard... Uh, uh, choo! Class, said the frizz. The sound you hear is a sneeze. Anything in the nose can make you sneeze. It could be a bit of dirt or dust or some bacteria. In this case, it happens to be a school bus. A tremendous blast of air hit the bus full force. We flew forward, spinning around and around. Children, prepare for landing. Please remain seated until the school bus has come to a complete stop. Is she for real? We were going so fast we couldn't see anything, but we could tell we were getting bigger. Then, we landed. There we were, back at school. We're back. Look, there's Arnold. And there was Arnold in the school parking lot, blowing his nose. Arnold! 
We said... The trip was amazing. You should have been there. Where, Where were, were you? you? Back in the classroom, it was business as usual. Miss Frizzle made us draw a chart of the human body for the bulletin board. Can we slip these kidneys in behind the intestines? Kidneys? Liver? I guess we didn't have time to go there. Thank goodness. What a trip! I'd like to go to the lungs again. I'd rather go to Hawaii. At last, everything was quiet in Ms. Frizzle's class. Everything, of course, except her dress. She must buy her clothes in outer space. Don't give her any ideas. false test. Read the sentences below. Decide if each one is true or false. To see if you are correct, check the answers on the opposite page. Question number one. A school bus can enter someone's body and kids can go on a tour. True or false? The answer to question number one is false. That could not happen in real life, not even to Arnold. But in this story, the author had to make it happen. Otherwise, the book would have been about a trip to the museum instead of a trip through the body. Question number two. Museums are boring. True or false? The answer to question number two is false. Museums are interesting and fun, but they are not as weird and gross as actually going inside the human body. Question number three. Arnold should not have tried to get back to school by himself. True or false? The answer to question three is true. In real life, it would have been safer if Arnold had found a police officer to help. Question number four. Children cannot breathe or talk when they are surrounded by a liquid. True or false? The answer to question four is True. If children were really inside a blood vessel, they would drown. It must have been magic. Question number five. If the children really were as small as cells, we couldn't see them without a microscope. True or false? The answer to question five is true. The pictures in this book show the cells and the children greatly enlarged. Question number six. White blood cells actually chase and destroy disease germs. True or false? The answer to question six is true. As unbelievable as it seems, real white blood cells actually behave just like the ones in this book. They even squeeze through the cells of blood vessel walls to capture germs in your organs and tissues. Question number seven. Ms. Frizzle really knew where Arnold was the whole time. True or false? The answer to question seven is probably true. No one is absolutely sure, but most people think I, um, Ms. Frizzle knows everything. Please do not write in this book. Thank you.